This is Kat with Bita Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the Untaken Road Statement Earrings. Now this features the beautiful Tear Cast Caravan Collection. So let me start by kind of showing you some of the beautiful pieces in this collection. So this is really a global chic inspired style. We have some beautiful pendants here. I actually made a pair of earrings with some lovely vintage Lucite links, just to add a little bright pop of that ruby red color. And then we also have these really cute little magnetic clasps. Now our other designer, Julie, designed these in a video, so you'll be able to check that out as well. But really fun, cool little style clasps. So some fun stuff there. And we also have some beautiful toggle clasps. And then these ones here, these are gonna have little holes at the bottom, so you can make those beautiful chandelier earrings. See, so we have that little drop and this beautiful little Hamsa hand as well. So you can see there's little holes at each little fingertip there, and then there's one at the top. So beautiful way to make some really stunning statement earrings. But today we're gonna be using some different pieces. So these crescent pieces here, these are the ones that we're gonna use to recreate these earrings here. Now these are the Untaken Road Statement Earrings, and today I'm gonna to be doing a little bit of a gold version. So what we're gonna be using here today is we're gonna be using this five point little crescent shape here. I have some puff beads, and these have two different sides to them, so they'll be able to sort of twist and become their own as you wear them. I have some four millimeter China Jade gemstones here. Now for my purple version there, I used faceted gemstones, again in the four millimeter, but these are perfectly round ones. So just a little, little tip and you know, feel free to use whichever gemstone you truly like. You can also mix and match as well. And then I have my little Lotus earring post findings here. And I have my bullet clutch with the little plastic on it because these are gonna be a little bit heavier because we are using gemstones and metal components. So I wanna make sure that these are gonna wear nice and comfortable on your ears. And then for today's project, I'm gonna be using one of the Beataholic finding kits. This includes head pins and eye pins. And I'm gonna be going over exactly what's in there in just a moment. And for tools, I have a flush cutter, a pair of round nose pliers, and a pair of chain nose pliers. So if you have everything all set to go, we are about to get started. All right, so let me start by talking about the Beataholic Finding Kit. And I'm gonna sort of open this on camera here. Just kinda poke my nail through there. There we go. All right, so we have our little bag inside here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Now I wanna draw your attention to the back of the packaging here. So what we're gonna have in here is we're gonna have head pins and eye pins. So you can see that for the head pins, we have one, two, and three inch. The eye pins, we have one, 1 1.5, and two inch. And these are all 22 gauge. So there's 15 of each, totaling 90 pieces. Now the reason I think these finding kits are just really great and I'm just gonna use my flush cutters to kind of cut that open, there we go, is that you can really sort of mix and match what you need at any given point. And you're gonna see why that's important for this particular design. It'll save you from buying a lot of extra things that you may or may not need. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out some of those one inch head pins there. And in this video, I'm gonna be making one earring. You just simply repeat this entire process to make the second earring. All right, I'm gonna try to get all of my findings over here. So let's start by making the three little dangles that are gonna go at the very bottom here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of my one inch head pins, slip on my gemstone, and now I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm just gonna make a simple wire loop. So I'm gonna get my pliers really close to the bottom there, just sort of bend it backwards and then bend it up and over the top. And now rotate my pliers and bring that around the front just to create that nice little wire loop. Remove my pliers and now I'm gonna take my flush cutters and get in there and remove my extra little piece to the side. So that is my first little loop there. And it's okay that my loop's open, I'm gonna leave it like that because we're gonna be attaching it. So I'm gonna repeat that twice more for two more here and then we're gonna come back for the next step. 
All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these little dangles here and we're gonna attach them to our piece. Now I wanna show you that this piece here does have a front and a back. On the back, it's gonna be a little bit more flush and on the front, especially these little triple little dots are gonna be raised. So we do wanna have a front and a back with these. Also the back is a little bit concave. I know that might be a little difficult to see, but you'll be able to see it when you have it in your hands there. So just to let you know, the front that I'm working with is gonna be this raised portion there. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my chain nose pliers here and I'm going to open the loop just by giving it a little gentle twist and I'm going to attach it to the bottom. Now you can see that because I'm working on the front here, I always want that loop going towards the back. It'll just make for a nice sleek design that way. And just close that up. And just make sure that your dangle is free flowing there. You don't want it to be too tight on your earring. So I'm just gonna repeat that for the other two. And I'm gonna add this one to the center. and just close that up. Now I'm just sort of using my hand. When you use a 22 gauge, you're gonna be, they're gonna be a little pliable enough, but if you are using a, a thicker gauge, you'd want to probably use another pair of pliers there. All right. And again, just sort of slipping that through. And now just closing that up. All right, and just check that they're all nice and free flowing. That is perfect. So I'm gonna set that down. So now we're gonna move on to our next little step here where we're gonna create little uh, eye pins with the same simple wire loop. So with this, you could use the longer ones if you like. You can also pick out the shorter ones. And again, with 22 gauge, if one of them is a little kinked, you just kinda can use your fingers to help straighten that out for you. All right, so we are gonna need six total. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out all of my eye pins now. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, perfect. All right, and again, we're just gonna take our eye pin, slip on our gemstone bead, and now you see how the wire is coming around and up this way? So what we're gonna wanna do is make the loop going the other way. All right, so I actually turn that around because I like to do my loops facing away from me. So what I'm gonna do, again, same, you just sort of bend it out to the side a little bit and then loop your wire up and over the top, move your pliers and bring it across, just like so. And you can see that it's a little short of a tail, so if this is too short for you to work with, go ahead and use one of those bigger ones there. You'll have a little bit more reach. In fact, let me do one of those right now just to kind of show you. All right, so if you wanted to use a bigger head pin here, or I'm sorry, excuse me, a bigger eye pin, uh, you could also use the larger head pins as well. So just the same thing, but then when you kick it back there, you'll notice that you have a lot of wire up here, and this might be a little bit easier for you to grasp to sort of bring around, because you can really get a good grip on it. All right, and then I'm gonna trim that off. And there we go. All right, now I'm gonna repeat so that I have six of these little dangles. All right, so now we're gonna do the next part of our assembly here. And we're gonna create those two little sections that go up towards the top. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of my eye pins here. And again, you can see that my loop is a little bit still open because I didn't bother to close it from when I did my simple wire loop, but that's okay, because you're gonna open it again. Open it again, heading towards the back there. I'm gonna slip it on, and now I'm gonna close it up, making sure it has a nice little closure there. Give it a little extra squeeze, there we go. And now I'm gonna to move to the other side here and just repeat that. Again, making sure that I'm putting my loop through to the back side there. It just makes for a little bit of a cleaner design. It really doesn't matter if that doesn't work out, so don't fret too much. <laughs> All right, so now you can see that these are gonna be sort of our guys that are gonna help go up. So we're gonna add two 
to the end here. So we're going to attach this now to our little wire loop there. And we're gonna close that up. And again, we're just gonna take another one, open it up, same as you would a, a jump ring. And then I'm just gonna close that one up. So we have three on one side, and now I'm just gonna attach these two so that we have three on the other side here. So take this one and attach it. Close it up. And take this one. Make sure to open up that little loop if it's closed. And attach it and close it up. All right. So now, let me just lay down our work here. This is what we should have going on, okay? So I have three of those eye pins going up each side. So those are gonna come together, but first we're gonna make that main component. So here's where you're gonna wanna use one of those two inch eye pins. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick out your gemstone, slide it all the way down, and now we're gonna slide on our puff coin bead and then choose another gemstone and slide it down. All right, now here's where it can get a little different. So we have obviously a loop that is facing perpendicular to our work. We wanna make, or I'm sorry, parallel to our work. We wanna make one that is going the opposite direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate my eye pin. Now don't worry, cause you want this to kind of be free flowing so you don't wanna do it too tightly. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a loop going the other way. So I'm gonna, again, take my pliers and now bend it back, go up and over the top there and around. And now I'm gonna trim my wire. All right, so here's where we're gonna check our work there. So you see how I have one loop facing up and one that's going around to the side. So they're sort of doing a little cross. So that's what we want for this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that loop at the bottom. I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers. You can use your round nose pliers too. I'm gonna open that up. And what I need to do now, and this might be the trickiest part, but you'll know if you get it. So you need to line up your little loops here at the bottom and actually, I'm gonna make sure that they're both closed really quickly. There we go. And the other one is closed, perfect. All right, so in order to get these to line up, let me see if I can do this with it lying down. You want to make sure that your loops here are going the right way to get it to sort of sit properly. So you need to just make sure that none of your eye pins are twisted around. All right, so now I'm gonna slip on one of the eye pins. Oops. Try to scoot that down. All right, so slip on one and then slip on the other. And just make sure that nothing is gonna be twisted. And then get in there with those chain nose or round nose pliers and just go ahead and close that loop up right there at the bottom. All right, so now we'll get a chance to sort of see and test it and see if it is correct. I'm just checking my work here. All right, so now we're gonna move to the top here and we're gonna open that loop and we're gonna slip it on to our little earring finding. And this is where you're gonna also wanna make sure that your earring finding is facing the right way. And then just simply close up that loop. There we go. And add your earring back and you are all finished. So that is how to make the untaken road statement earrings. And like I said, you'll just simply repeat this to make the second earring. So, and you can actually do it all at once if you wanted to. You can kind of create all your little bits and baubles as you go up. And that way you are all set to go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You can find all of these supplies, this beautiful 
TierraCast Caravan Collection by heading over to VitaHalik.com.